In this video, we're going to learn how to create a form with HTML elements and how to add inputs, of, specifically of type text, and how to label them. So here I've got just the labels, right, the headings of what I want to do for this form. So I've just begun what I kind of want to look on here, but there's no input elements and no form elements. So if I go into my HTML, I have this header, and that's not going to be part of my form. But all of these sections are going to have form elements in them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my opening form tag above it. And then I'm going to put my closing form tag below. And this then lets me identify which section of the web page is going to be a form. And if I look at this on the web page, it actually makes no difference. So it's not a visible change to identify that you're now using a form. So it turns out that the element that works really well for forms is an input element. So I'm going to add one here. This is input. And with input, notice that we want to do is put type attribute. And the type determines which kind of input element it's going to be. So we're going to start with text. And also notice that it's saying it wants a name element. And the name element is what's going to be the variable name of the value that the user enters. And this is an important thing for a form, because with a form we're going to be wanting to gather data, information from the user. And so we need to identify what variable. Well, in this one, we're going to get, be getting the name of the user. So the value, the variable name, is actually going to be name. And that's what we want to get from them. So let's save that and go see what we get. And there you see, with input type text, you get a text box. All right, and that's you get. And this is something that can be that people can type in. They can put their name, John Phillips, and and can enter in that text box. So that's it. Now notice that the user doesn't know what to enter in the text box. It does. It is labeled with you up here, but what do you want specifically in the text box? So we can add a label. And if we add the label before the input box, then the label will show up before. So we'll kind of show that both ways. So notice that a label has an opening and closing tag. And inside here, we can put the instructions. Enter your name. And we reload, and there we get the label, enter your name. Now we want to connect these two together. Notice that when I click on this, the text box is active. When I click on the text box, but nothing happens when I click on the label. So we can connect this label, even though they're side by side, they're not actually connected, until we add the for attribute. And the for attribute goes inside the label, and what it's looking for is what element to be connected to. So to identify that, we need to go down to the input element and give it an ID. And that's what 4 is going to be looking for. So we're going to say ID equals, and here we're going to give it ID. And I'm just going to give it an ID called name. And so now I can say this label is for the name element, or for the label is for the element with ID set to name. All right, now notice they're connected. The for attribute in the label matches the value of the ID attribute in the input element. And now when I refresh it, when I click on the label, it makes the text box active and moves the cursor there. So you can make it active by going to the text box or by clicking on the label because they're connected. And so it activates either the label or the text box itself activates the text box. And that is how you create a form and add a text box and a label. Another element that's very similar to the text box is the password input element. And we get this by using the, again, using the input tag. And this time the type is password. And we want to give it a name. And this again is the variable name. So there's password. And we want to give it an ID because we're going to put it with a label. So notice how I've made all of these the same. That is not a requirement. but. Uh, they can be the same, but they don't have to be. 
Here I also want to add a label for this one. So on this one I want to say enter your password and put that label on the way I connect. Remember the way I connect it is with the for attribute and in here I want to put whatever value it is of the ID. Okay, now this should connect them. So if we go look at the form and we refresh, we get a label and a text box. Now notice how these are all on the same line. These are all inline elements. Labels and input elements are inline elements. And so what we're seeing here is just wrapping. If I change the width to 800, you'll see that that wrapping will go away because I've made the page wide enough. And there you just see them coming right after another. So you can organize your form elements by putting in paragraphs or something else that keeps them separate. So if I wanted these to be on the same, if I wanted these to be on separate lines, I could say, well, I want this first one to be in a paragraph, and then I want the second one to be in another paragraph. And that way, the paragraphs will add the um, separations, right? Because they're block elements, and so I'll get them on in individual paragraphs. But the labels and the input elements are inline elements. Now let's see the difference between a regular text box. They look exactly the same, right? But now when I type in the password, it doesn't display the characters that are being displayed. So it's a text box. It's going to gather it just like we did, but it's non-visible to either the user or somebody else with them. And again, notice how I can activate the password either by clicking on it or clicking on the label because I've connected them together. And there's a start on how to create forms using HTML.